personal welcome and to welcome Liana Shauli is at your Free Enterprise Forum class. Welcome. Welcome to my world of brilliance. I see you and I want you to know that what is inside of you is the part that I connect to first and foremost. No matter how much is going on inside your spirit, no matter if there's turmoil or sadness or grief or difficulty or joy, that I see who you are. My name is Liana Shauli, as Bernie has introduced me. And I want to share with you at the beginning of my talk today a story of why I'm even here. It's thanks to Bernie that I'm here and I love him and I'm grateful that he has built this world for some of us to step in and just go, oh my God, I feel so home. I feel like I'm home and I do. The reason why I'm here today is because of the Shah of Iran. So when I talk to you about being regal and bringing out the essence of who you are and that every woman is a queen and every man is a king, it is truly, truly from the depth of my soul and my history and my Kabbalistic background that I see you as a king and as a queen. Are you shaking your head? Good. My grandfather, Ezra Malamed, was the tailor of the Shah of Iran. How many of you know Iran? You know it as Iran, I call it Persia. In the 30s, when he was um, coming back from exile, he was in exile in Russia, he came back to Iran, and the king recognized him as one of the most fabulous tailors. He had learned tailoring in Russia when he was in exile. And when he came back, he started making garments for the generals. And the generals started looking extremely well and better and better. And the king said, who's making your clothes? Who's making your uniforms? And the general said, Ezra Malamed. And Ezra Malamed, my grandfather, came to court and got appointed the royal tailoring position. I think we have a picture, don't we? There, that's the Shah of Iran. That's the son of the man who appointed my father the tailor of the king. And what he's got around his shoulders when he, the day that he was crowned is a coat that my grandfather made. My grandfather's hands were working his magic. The hands that I've been given from my grandfather. And why is the story important? My grandfather was a 40-year-old man. He was married to a woman. He had a wonderful life. He walks into a session one day with the king and doesn't knock on the door. He's there, he's got a suit on his arm. And he's standing in the doorway watching the king of Iran crawling on his hands and knees on the floor with his son on his back. And Ezra, my grandfather, is standing in the doorway laughing loud. And the Shah turns around to him and says, why are you laughing, Ezra? He says, your majesty, I apologize. But it is so funny to see the ruler of such a great and powerful and majestic nation on his hands and knees crawling on the floor with his son on his back. He says, what do you mean? Don't you have children? Don't you play with your children? And my grandfather says, no, your honor, I don't. He says, what do you mean you don't have children? How old are you? He says, 40. He says, if you want to keep your royal appointment as a tailor in my court, I want you to divorce your wife because she can't have children. I want you to go and marry someone who can and then I want you to come back in two weeks and tell me that you've done it, otherwise you will lose your job. And guess what? I'm proof that he did. <laughs> because he went and he married my grandmother 
who was several years younger than he was, and he proceeded to have eight children. So my mother's family, side of the family are eight, my father's side of the family are ten. I am the very lucky cousin of 96 first cousins. It's true. So when you have a big family, what do you think happens? You get together a lot. What do you think happens then? You eat, you dance, you sing, you make jokes. But the one thing that we do in Persian families a lot, we see each other. We see, we look at each other a lot. And so I learned as a young child very, very quickly to look at people's behaviors, to look at their actions, to look at what it is that they're doing, to be able to see deeply into their spirit. You can do that. That's a big part of my work. I'd like you to look in front of you. There's a card. Do you all see it? My business partner and I developed this card a while back. It's an edict that I've had for about 25 years. And the edict goes as such. When you are walking across the street or you're in an environment and you have a wonderful, kind thought about someone, how many of you go up to that person and actually say that? That's good. But it could be the whole room. Wouldn't it be lovely if you had permission to just look at someone and go, God, she is so beautiful. What a gorgeous smile. What a brilliant essence. What beautiful hair. How kind of him to hold the door for me. How kind of her to do this. Something. And just really go and tell that person. These cards do that. And the aim of the game is that you take a card, there's six different cards, you should all have different ones, and you should look at your card, take a look at it, and now I will give you two minutes. I'd like you to get up, and I'd like you to be able to give your card to someone special. That's just a test, because what you're really going to do in the world, you're going to get out, give this to someone, and you're going to hope that it doesn't come back to you, because the aim of the game is, to give them away into the world so that people will get this gift that you're giving them. Because the truth is that the thought that you're having about that person doesn't belong to you. It's a thought that you need to continue giving. So make it a ceremony. So I want you to take two minutes to just do the ceremony, test it out in the safety of this room, and then come back to your seats. Don't take too long, please. Find someone you can do that with. Preferably someone you don't know. <laughs> someone you don't know. 